This is my 1997 Dodge Ram 1500. It's got the 5.2 V8. That. I'm changing this. Look at that. I got the fuel filler neck. It's the 516th Nikop line. That's clearly the problem. Here's the number. It's a Carter. There we go. Pretty fun. It's very steep and then narrow. Well, if it ain't one thing, it sure is another. Yep. Of course, right after I put a bunch of work into the truck, placing the rocker and fuel pump and stuff starts to get a rod knock. All right, welcome back everyone. Uh, in the last video, we were working on my 1997 Dodge Ram 1500 up until it spun a rod bearing. Well, actually it started knocking first. So here, I'll give you guys this full story. So I was driving to a camp out and right as I was pulling in the campsite, it started knocking, it had low oil pressure. It started knocking just a very little bit. When you would rev the engine up, the oil pressure would come right back to like 40 PSI and the knocking would go away. So I kind of forgot about it, about it that night. And then the next day I drove it home and it started knocking a little bit more, but it only really started knocking bad right as I was pulling up the driveway. So I think the bearing was only not attached to the connecting rod for maybe 30 seconds. As you can see, I already pulled the oil pan off, obviously to get that bearing out. You know, and there's what it looks like when you have a bearing go out. Your oil should not be silver and metallic. So I'm under the truck now and you can see the journal where the bearing spun and you can also see that it is in pretty good condition. So I don't see any reason that we can't use it. My fingernail barely catches on one little scratch. So we'll polish that up. But first, I'm going to take off the oil pump and the last main bearing cap to check the condition of the main bearing, as well as I'm going to replace the rear main seal. Let's also get this gasket off of here. Two bolts that hold this oil pump in. Oh. And we'll take a, oops, we'll have to take a look at this pump and figure out if there's any issues with it. Got the bolts broken loose on the main cap. Those can be stuck on there pretty good sometimes. Get a little hammer and tap it. And that bearing, that bearing looks pretty okay to me. Don't see any major issues with it. Um, there's not any major scores which would indicate that uh, large pieces of metal were making it through the oil system. And you'd have to assume small flakes were able to make it through at least a little bit through the oil filter.
main journal looks great the surface where the rear main seal rides also looks good I'm going to put a new rear main seal in it because I think the old one is leaking that or the oil pan gasket was leaking so for the repair what can you do in this situation well you can do the perfect thing and rebuild the motor you know at the end of the day metal shavings are in the engine and the only way to get rid of every last one of them and make it perfect is to tear the whole motor down and clean out every single passage by hand i guess my point is by polishing that rod journal even though it's not perfect throwing in new bearings it's not like i'm making the truck worse than it would be because you can get these magnum engines at junkyards for pretty cheap which i could do but the whole point of this repair is that it's fast because i don't have the time to swap an engine in this the parts that i have already that i ordered as soon as i heard it knocking the rod bearings and the oil pan gasket here's the number seven rod bearing cap you can see the copper and that's the backing that they put the bearing material on and once you start seeing the copper you know it's time to change the bearings so I'm gonna go through and change all the rod bearings and we'll plastic gauge that number four when we get to it well I think I just found the nail in the coffin looking a little closer at that journal that journal is way too worn so it either needs a used motor from a junkyard or pull out this one and grind the crank. Neither of which I have time for. It even has three quarters of a tank of gas. Everyone liked this little fix, but that, this check engine light is just cause of that EVA, EVAP code. I never got around to changing the purge solenoid. Good, good, good good all right let's throw the oil pan on actually before we put the oil pan on let's put the pump grab your brand used gasket put it on then with the bolts snugged up there we can grab the torque wrench and tighten them down here's just one more view of that rod before the oil pan goes back on. I'm gonna remove the dipstick to make it a little bit easier to install. A Little bit of silicone in the corners and to help hold it down. And then more silicone on the corners. Got everything buttoned back up on the truck. Just have to put the oil filter. I'm pre-filling it with 15W40 and Lucas. So I got the starter on. I forgot to put that plate on before the starter and I'm too lazy to take the starter back off. And like the entire engine has to come out anyway, so. And since I plan on selling this truck, torque the oil filter down to 800 foot pounds. Pretty sure I got 15 W40 in this container. Next up, some Lucas, a lot of Lucas. And we'll finish topping it off with some 80 W90. All right, it says safe. That means we should be safe from rod knock, right? Got the battery back on. Let's see how bad it sounds. What? It's not even knocking. Oil pressure. Okay. Oh, there goes the oil pressure and it's not even knocking anymore. All right, it's a little bit later. Let's see if it still is okay. Man, it's not even knocking. Still. I'm gonna go for a little test drive, 
warm it up, see what happens. Well, I put about 10 miles on it. Temperature's up, oil pressure is down a little, but still good. As expected, it is ticking. That was a fun last hurrah, though. I did a pretty thorough test on it in those 10 miles. Yeah. It's definitely worse. So, the answer is the bearing and Lucas trick lasted about 10 miles. Maybe a little more. Well, sad to see it go. She looks good. Good luck with it. There it goes. The old Dodge just sold it. Here's what's left of it. I think I got what, what it was worth. Of course, I kept the air brake valve. And I also convinced them to leave me the subwoofer. I think this has the amp built into it, so it's pretty nice. I actually sold it for exactly what I paid for it last year. And I guess I kept some of the stuff, so... I did spend a lot of money and time on it, but it is what it is. I don't have it anymore. So this is kind of an abrupt ending, but once I realized the engine was no good, I kind of got sick of filming with the GoPro, but here's two pictures from the first day I bought the track, the truck. Here's a little while later after I put the hitch on, pulling the John Deere M. And I pulled this little trailer around a lot. It was a nice setup with the single cab. Here, here it looks pretty good, pulling the Ford 8N. And then here's the kid that bought it. He's going to put a new engine in it, hopefully bring it back to life. They actually drove it an hour home, so good luck to him. And thank you everyone for watching this video, and stay tuned for the next one.